It is a pleasure for me and my team from Liberia to participate in this webinar. And I would like to thank the organizer for giving us this opportunity. This presentation seeks to provide response to the theme question of this webinar. What does the Paris Agreement's transparency framework mean for Liberia as a least developed country? As seen in the online, I'll try to share our national reporting experience under the convention, explain where we are at the moment in terms of our national communication and by annual update report, present our vulnerabilities as key motivations from our national perspective, as well as outline challenges, outcomes, and lessons learned. The Act of the National Legislature that created the EPA of Liberia, among other things, gave the agency the authority to sustainably manage the environment, including climate change. For example, preparing and submitting national communications and biannual update reports. Of course, to adequately execute its mandate, EPA works with government ministries and agencies as well as other infantry stakeholders. In this slide, the structure of climate change governance in Liberia is summarized in an organogram form. As seen, EPA works in consultation with the National Climate Change Steering Committee, which is the overarching institutional structure with the mandate to coordinate and supervise the implementation of climate change policy. The National Climate Change Secretariat, as seen here, is a supportive component of the steering committee. The Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, MOFDP, headed by a minister, chairs the EPA board. As stated, EPA is the designated national authority. So, if you want to conduct greenhouse gas inventory in Liberia, what institutions will you be looking out for? The major ones for the key emission sectors are highlighted in this table in red. For the energy sector, we have the Ministry of Mines and Energy. For the IPPU, the Ministry of Commerce, Waste, City Corporations. Agriculture, the Ministry of Agriculture. And for the forestry and other land use or the FOLU sector, we have the Forestry Development Authority for the forestry subsector and the Liberia Land Authority for the land use subsector. So let's address this question. Where are we with our infantry? Well, Liberia is in the advanced stages of the second national communication and first biannual of the report. And hopefully, by October this year, will be submitted to the UNFCCC. As you can see here in paragraph 2, these are the gases covered. For now, perfluorocarbon PFCs and sulfur hexafluoride SF6 are not included. The tier 1 approach of the 2006 IPCC guidelines is being used. Even though Liberia's contribution 
to the global greenhouse gas emissions is negligibly low, the impacts of climate change are even more evident in a country over the past few decades, given that the um the physical, the financial, the human and the natural capitals are low to build resilience. There are increased occurrences of flood across the country, as you can see in this slide and the next. This is a pictorial of the level of flood damage and coastal erosion, especially in impoverished communities. The preparation of our national communications and boundary update report has not come without enormous challenges. Infantry stakeholders are not forthcoming with data due to lack of trust, unavailability of data, and in some cases, variations in format, perhaps due to lack of understanding of greenhouse gas infantry. In addition, from um, experience, I can say that we have weak institutions to successfully execute sustainable infantry activities. The absence of even an MOU and the huge rate of turnover of staff in public service are further hurting the infantry process. Lessons learned. We have now come to the realization that engagement and consultation with stakeholders, strong institutional and individual capacities, as well as robust institutional arrangement are essential elements to help us successfully transition to the enhanced transparency framework of the Paris Climate Agreement. In conclusion, let me hasten to say that Liberia is not fully prepared for the new framework that the Paris Agreement presents. But when capacities are enhanced at the systemic, institutional, and individual levels, Liberia will be in an ideal position to present its first biannual transparency report or the BTR in 2024 as required for all countries as per the transparency framework. Once again, on behalf of my team, I will want to thank the International Institute for Environment and Development, IIED, for considering us, and personally, thanks to all of you for listening. We hope to learn from your national reporting experiences and gain further insight on the real meaning, the actual meaning of the transparency framework for least developed countries. Thank you so much.